So our journey into the next um, enterprise network, when I call next, meaning, you know, today's network is built on, you know, LAN, Wi-Fi, we added IoT into it. And now when you look at the convergence of wireless technology that is happening in the name of bringing in the unlicensed uh, you know, 5G technologies, uh, somewhat licensed, somewhat, and all those things we will, so we feel it will show up in one way or the other into the enterprise. Perhaps it will start from a larger enterprise solving a specific use case, and then it will trickle down. So our holistic approach here is very simple, what Mark and Andy was presenting. We consider your access layer to be anything you want to, to serve your need. I mean, it could be Wi-Fi, it could be IoT, it could be 5G, it could be CBRS, it could be LAN. So our approach here, we want to give our customers the tool and the software that they need, that the data, the connections, the application connectivity that is coming through all these access layer, then we're going to rationalize the data. So the consumption that happens at the higher layer applications, it could be seamless which means it doesn't matter that connection is coming from a Zigbee radio, or is it coming from a Wi-Fi radio or somewhere else? We're going to harmonize that in our middle layer software. And then we're going to present that data in a more cohesive manner. So the consumption could be access layer neutral. That's our kind of a holistic strategy that we are making our journey into, right? And I, I threw in something I think a lot of it you, you probably already know, very familiar with. I think the 5G and CBRS brings a couple of interesting twists to the enterprise network, particularly in the name of you know, latency, reliability, and, and um, you know, if you want clean air. So some applications probably would benefit immensely uh, quickly. But a lot of it could be solved by five, you know, Wi-Fi. And if you look down the path, Wi-Fi 7, you know, those two technologies are coming closer as well. So in our, uh, when you look at that thing, right? So in terms of why we think that way, we think the solution a customer would choose, how they want to consume the network services, it should be left to them, their applications, their business need. And we as a vendor offering a solution into them, we should be able to support whatever they want to do you know, based on their purpose that they have. So that's why, you know, you'd hear us talking about purpose-driven network architecture. So whatever we are doing in Ruckus um, and, and our sister business unit in Comscope, we're focusing on that. Like, how can we offer a platform where you would be allowed to consume any services that come in from different set of technologies at the bottom part, at the end of the day, if you think about it, top half, you have all those business applications that wants to consume services that are being delivered either through a camera, sensor, or any other data collections entities, or even the users or laptop, you know, those are all you know, kind of a, um, data devices, if you will. Now, those things being either consume something from the north or being served something in there. So what we are focusing more that to the middle layer, what we call policy control and data steering engines, we would be able to allow, um, let me let me back up one thing, right? We want to create the similar experience that uh, our IT folks have been used to, like the ease of use of Wi-Fi, ease of use of LAN network. We want to bring that simplicity, ease of use, into more complex technology, when you think about 5G and, and CBRS, um, the unlicensed portion of it, how do we make that life simple, as simple as Wi-Fi? That is how our, our whole motto, you know, offering a simplified solution. How do I do that? I want to you know, offer you a platform that allows you to do a granular control through the policy, and then some more data steering engine that will take you to where you want to send it to. Of course, there will be unification in the management in, so that you don't have to have a, like a multiple touch point to manage these things. The, the data analytics platform that um, Rajiv talked about it, that's you know, immensely powerful. He only touched on a portion of it. Uh, we're gonna take that across these technologies. Now that leads to the, you know, a simple 
picture, right? How we see it, how these networks will come and, and play. On the top right, if you focus on it, that's how traditionally many, many IT network that has been deployed. Now we're taking the exact same model and we're saying, okay, you don't need to learn new things, new way of doing things. We'll simplify it for you. We'll make your network consumption simple. So let's go through the model. We're adding our one cell from our sister uh, business group. Uh, we have Ruckus CBRS APs, some of you already know. So bring that in. Now all those access layer technologies being driven through an intelligence layer and that intelligence layer could be distributed. Uh, again, depending on the customer's need, you could be deploying the whole thing in the cloud. We have a complete cloud consumption model, or you could choose to say, I'm gonna do everything on-prem. So, you know, the whole thing on the left of this orange bar could move into the middle. What we believe, it will be somewhere where the demarcation line you see, the orange line, that there, the data is, is where you are consuming will stay local. Uh, it'll stay closer to the applications where it's being consumed. The rest of the control or um, management functions, perhaps will you take advantage of the cloud. Now, some of this data, it makes sense to go all the way to the cloud. Um, if you think about how do I take advantage of cloud computing to create more powerful analytics, um, you know, that, that depends on the business application. So the model that we are adopting, it's flexible. It really depends on what the customer wants, right? Now, this kind of explains, um, you know, you have application one and I'm coming through Wi-Fi or coming through data, um, through 5G data plane. It doesn't matter, right? From a device perspective, they, they just come in and we take care of that complexity in the middle and we steer the data to the application, you know, proper applications where it needs to be. Again, that based on the, go ahead. Do you rely on the device to choose if they want to connect via Wi-Fi or 5G? because you know, different devices will have different. So that's controlled by the policy engines that we are putting in place, which takes into account what the device users and, you know, and we're making it more sophisticated as we move along, like location and time, but it really depends on the organization policy. Would they allow you to connect your laptop to a 5G network, or you're only allowed to connect to your you know, machine that is in the factory floor? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, so you would only define like a Wi-Fi profile or like a CBRS profile and not both on the it's same- both device? as well. So the policy framework is common. Remember the chart I showed you, like all the access layer technologies mm -hmm. in the bottom, but the policy cut across all these technologies. So we have a policy engine where you could define a common policy and there will be also a segment in the policy framework, which, you know, there may be something which only makes sense for Wi-Fi. There will be something only makes sense for CBRS. So there will be that kind of segments, but there will be commonality across them, like particularly user behavior. Would you allow this person to roam between CBRS to Wi-Fi? That's another policy. Or you may choose, say, okay, I'm going to not allow the laptop to go into the CBRS network. That's a completely organization. So again, it's an organization purpose will drive how they want to set it up. Could you have like, both radios enabled because you're on the same network, no? Yeah, both, both radio. I mean, infrastructure wise, both radio, radios would be enabled, right? So you could be connected to CBRS and Wi Fi at the same time. If again, that depends on the organization. If yeah. they allow you to do so, then yeah. we, in our policy, we're going to look at, I think, your questions early on, right? How do you, what do you do to keep it in which connection is a better connection for you at that moment? And that would drive like your quality of experience policy that you, that you would set it up, the SLS that you want to achieve for that profile, the device and the user combinations, that would drive that kind of decisions, whether I want to keep it in the Wi-Fi or will kick you out and push it to the CBRS side of the network. Could you, could you imagine having like using CBRS for some applications and using Wi-Fi for others Absolutely. at the same time? Again, that's the policy again. If you say, I want to run this application only on CBRS, that policy will drive that distance. The network is not going to allow you to come to Wi-Fi for that particular thing. You could choose not to allow roaming too. Yeah. And, and did I answer your question? I think I touched on the corner side a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you did. So, so from our perspective, it's, it's the policy that would drive that distance. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things I would say 
there are certain constraints in terms of what you can do on a 5G radios. Um, so we're working on it. Not everything has been backed, right? Uh, there's certain quality of service we can set it up and certain we, we have to rely on the core software um, and we're using a third party core software for that. So uh, there will be some complexity there, but we'll work on that. Okay, um, moving on to that. I, I don't want to bore you guys to all these details, but here is a, if you want to know the entire stack, right? And our components wise, where things are, um, our primary focus is, of course, a lot of things coming from our sister um, business unit, which is called um, Intelligent Cellular Segment. They have both licensed and unlicensed radio, along with baseband software that comes with it. Um, so that would come. And again, it's a, it's a virtualized platform. Uh, you could deploy on-prem, it could deploy in the cloud. Our main focus, a lot of these entities we already have. So, you know, when, when people talk about private network, I mean, a lot of people talk about their vision slides. Um, fortunately, in Ruckus with Comscope, we actually have these things working in, in some format. We're working on it to, you know, enhance it, make it better. So our focus really on the top two layers that you see, policy control and data segmentation and the management analytics and the IoT. So the IoT, think about IoT another one, like you could deploy it as a solution and then access layer could be the IoT radios, it could come through Wi-Fi, it could come through 5G too, right? Video cameras, 5G enabled video camera, think about that, right? Can I ask you, your, your virtual environment? Yes. Um, what virtual environment are you using? Are you agnostic to it? And, and do you have it on the access point as well as all the other network functions that you've got there? Yeah, so it's a, it's a um, K, uh, K3 based uh, solution that, that we're adopting, Cotton um, Eyes. Okay. And, um, you know, most likely the solution will be deployed through our management platform that is in the cloud, you orchestrate from there. You know, how, how many you want to spin it out? How do you want to deploy? How do you want to orchestrate? Which service you want to run on those containers? Will you be running a virtualized platform on the access point itself? And will it be a real-time virtualization platform? Um, so the example, what Mark was giving was actually on the access point itself. Mm. Um, for some, not for the 5G. And it would okay. be too much for access point to run on the 5G itself. Right. But we also have a virtualized platform that uh, we're we're offering as a software solution, mm. but also at some point, I think over time, we'll look into creating a, a, any hardware component if we need to. But right now, I think the, our strategy is to deliver as a package software solution that you could run on a card server. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, so I think I touched on this one. So our, our you know, we, we are trying to unify we just don't want to just randomly unify things. We want to create an unified experience. So those two key items that we touched on, that would be our primary focus at this moment. Of course, we'll take advantage of the, um, the good AI ML engines that we have in our products. The same engine will be extended to the other new technologies areas. Now, the whole thing, you know, if you think about if the glue is really this purpose-driven policy engine control and, and the data straining engine that we're talking about, right? These kinds of brings them together. I, I touched this a lot of it. We're also very mindful of that. We cannot solve everything ourselves. So the platform is highly extensible and also has API capability so that you could interface, you know, you could suck it out or you could inter, you know, take instruction from others. You could proxy into other systems. Uh, for example, our AAA, um, you may deploy in an organization, they already have a AAA functions. So we don't want to create that, we'll proxy into that. Um, similar thing, you know, um, 5G, 3GPP, AAA, sometimes it will come as a package. So in that case, we'll have to see, you know, uh, we'll, we'll proxy into that and then, you know, enforcement would be done through the same policy that we have. Yeah. If we were wanting to sit down and like go through more of this and like learn more about it, is, are there, you guys have the API stuff published and so something we can dig into and just- like We are working on it, okay. right? So it's all still being baked in. Um, we have uh, what I call like a POC, um, you know, and I, um, I have one slide I'll show you. It's, it's deployed in our, our, our factory where we put it, this together, right? But we have every intention to publish as a standard APIs for some of these. 
for because we we totally understand that we cannot do everything ourselves right yeah so this is an example this is live um, we we deployed uh, both wi-fi cbrs um, in our factory and then this was an example of network that bart was mentioning right the ot network so it guys didn't want to touch it but there was an immense need for you know some of this data the operational efficiency so we went in and put together this package solution and we deployed it and the immediate result from the factory floor managers they they kind of delighted they, you know first of all they didn't have it now that they have it they say oh my god why you didn't have it so we we do see a lot of new verticals would benefit from these kind of solution manufacturing logistics um, and so on and so forth and here is an example uh, petco park in uh, san diego uh, what they have done their wi-fi network is running you know the normal entertainment of users but their pos and uh, you know cell system is running on cbrs so it's clean doesn't clog line doesn't grow so that's the example i think i'm running into my time so i would leave it with this one slide that our approach is to really give you the choice to the customer and and we offer a mix and match capability and and the architecture is flexible enough you choose what works for you given that a lot of that was based on 5g in the core network are you building your a northbound apis based on the 5g api framework so that's a very good question right that 5G itself is so much complicated with so yeah. many modules. Mm. So we purposefully chose what makes sense for enterprise, right? Okay. So if you look, uh, I mean, I skip through very quickly one of those models. You probably have noticed I don't have all the component of 5G yeah. there. Yeah. And there's a reason for it, right? Mm. So I, I only focus what makes sense for enterprise. Like what makes sense to create a Wi-Fi-like network? Mm. It's just that 5G happened to be your access technology. Mm. That's the approach you are taking. So we're not going to bring in like a complex, you know, network service resource manager, NSSF, or, you know, all those functions that you see in a complex. Now, of course, uh, I think you are from Verizon. So um, if we work with you with this kind of solution, we'll look into those. Uh, we have to bring some of those, but at this moment, we're not looking at. It. We're mm -hmm. just focusing on data plane, mm -hmm. the UPF and SMF, and then we're adding the mobility on top and then the AAA functions. 